you know, to understand why do we do what we do? Have you ever asked yourself that? Why am I doing what I'm doing? Nobody ever asked that question of themselves. It just, <laughs> why am I doing this? Why am I doing this, Lord? You know, what, what, what is my life? And, and it's like the great thing about Jesus, he, he's still calling, come follow me. <laughs> come follow me. Come, come and be my disciple. Come and have fellowship with me. Come and, 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 and embrace my sayings, my teachings. And, and if you do, you, it, you'll, you'll be like a wise man because if you'll embrace what I'm teaching you and saying and begin to do them in your life, you'll, you'll be like that man who, who built his house on the rock. The storms came and beat against that house. I mean, the wind and rain and tsunami and just pounding on it. And, uh, and, and Jesus said it did not fall. Woo, hallelujah. Founded on the rock. See, we're, we're founded on the truth of the sayings of Jesus when we not only hear them, but we do them. Because he, 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 he likened a foolish man is one who just hears and doesn't put him into practice. And it's like building your house. He, he, he was talking about your life, building your life on sand. There's no foundation. And when the storms hit and the rains came and the tsunami, it said it knocked down that house and said great was its fall. How many here in the Bible, I mean, you know what Ephesians 6 says. He says, finally be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you might stand against the wiles of the devil. The wiles of the devil, the tricks, the schemes, the plans. Then he says, put on the whole armor of God. The helmet of salvation. The breastplate of righteousness. He says to gird up your loins with truth, God's truth. He, he says to put on the shoes. How many here you like nice shoes? <laughs> there's, there's not anything better than the shoes of peace. How beautiful are the, are, are the feet of those who bring the good news of the gospel? Yeah. How, how, you know, the gospel of peace. Then he says, take up the shield of faith where you'll be able to quench all the fiery darts of the enemy. The enemy is shooting at you. Don't think it's strange. Don't, don't think it's strange. He, he's trying to get you to fall. He's trying to get you to, to, to give up. He, he, he's wanting you to quit. He, he doesn't want you to volunteer. He doesn't want you to be a disciple. He, 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 he wants you to quit. But how many know that Jesus doesn't want you to quit? Did Jesus quit? No. Is Jesus our example? Yes. And then he says, take up the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Woo, hallelujah. The sword of the spirit. Right. <laughs> I don't want to touch that. You know, you want to go at the devil. <laughs> Without the word. I mean, no, we need the word of God to run the devil off. Yes. Use that word of the Lord. And then he says, after you've done all, keep standing. What that represents is you never stop. He never stops. You know, Isaiah says, Lord, I'll go for you, but when when should I stop preaching? Ever. He said, when there's no more people. <laughs> when there's no more people. How many know that God is interested in people? Yes. How many his heart beats to save the world? 
He gave his son to save the whole world. I mean to turn those rotten ones into something, a golden apple. I mean, here as a little boy, I mean, oh, I'm not eating that rotten apple. I want a good one. I want a... But God is able to take a rotten apple and make it new. God is able. He took this rotten apple. And he changed me. If any man be in Christ, he becomes a new creation. Old things pass away. Behold, all things become brand new. Man, this is new. You've got to look at yourself being new in him. Because he who knew no sin became sin for us. That we might become the righteousness of God in him. It always leads back to in him. In him I live and move and have my being. In him. He, he, he's the vine. I'm the branch. I've got to abide in him. If I abide in him, then I'm going to bear fruit. I'm going to be that house that cannot be knocked down. Why? It's founded on the truth. It's founded on the rock. How many know that Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He is that rock that we stand on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, I'm looking at a countdown here. It's, it's James 5, 19, 20. Now, I'm just going to read this. I didn't ask him to put it up there. So, it says, Brother, if any among you wonders from the truth, and someone turns him back, Somebody turns him back. Yeah. Let him know. God is saying, I want you to know that if you turn somebody back, that he will have turned a sinner from the error or the mistakes of his way and will save a soul. Save a soul from death and cover a multitude of sins. Lord. Hallelujah. Lord. How many here you want to be that person? Yes. Come on, we should all want to be that person. I want to help people turn from the air of their ways. How I many know the world is going the wrong way? The world needs Jesus. Do you got him? What are we doing with what we got? Telling others. Telling others. Freely we have received. Now we're going to get there. Why do we do what we do? Now I want to read just after all that I've just said here. It says this in Revelation 7, 9. He says, After these things I looked and behold a great multitude which no one could number. No one could count it. Have you ever tried to count the stars in the sky? <laughs> Have you ever tried to count the sand grains on, on a beach? Yeah, I'm here on your beach. I'm counting up how many you know, sand pieces you have. Wouldn't that be crazy trying to do that? Separate it all. He, he, he's saying here, you, you can't even count it. Of all nations, tribes, people, tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Now you might, well, yeah, that says it. The point I want you to understand that he, he who wins souls and gathers them for eternity, that's what God has and wants us to do. He, he, he wants us to bring people into the kingdom of God. And it's like, it, it, you have freely received salvation. Did you earn it? It says, for by grace you've been saved, and that not of yourself. It's a gift of God, least any man should boast. See, he, he's done the work. You just simply believe. You, you received what God's word said. And you acted on it. You believed in your heart, and you confessed Jesus with your mouth. And you became saved. How many are glad you're saved? Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Redeemed. 
for God's plan to work in you. How many here you want God's plan to work in you? You can mark this down, but I'm going to read it. In Psalm 110, 3, it says, Your people shall be volunteers in the day of your power. How many here you want to see the power of God in the earth today? Yes. See, that whole volunteer thing is freely we've received, freely give. Okay? And we're going to look at that here in a minute, but I want to put this in our hearts and in our thinking, in, in our mouth, that, that we want to see God's power demonstrated in the earth today. And it's like to do that, we're, we're going to have to get out of ourselves. And we're going to have to start looking, Lord, I want to sow to the Spirit. I want to be led by the Spirit of God. I want to take what, what God's placed in me, the gifts and abilities that he's placed in me, and I want to use it for the glory of God. I want to use it for the glory of God. Well, I had time, Pastor. How many know that we all have 24 hours in a day? 365 days out of the year. We, we, we've used up a few already this year. But we need to get this, this mentality. What is a volunteer? Can I tell you what a volunteer is? A person who freely offers to take part in an enterprise, a company, or a business to freely offer to do something. I'm going to read it again because I want you to grab a hold of this. Because we just said that your people shall be volunteers in the day of your power. How many here you want to see God's power released? Not the Kraken, okay? We want to see the power of God released on the earth to save, to deliver, to heal, to, to, to cause people to come out of darkness, to come into the light, to come out of that hole, that stronghold of Satan into, into God's kingdom. We want that released in the earth, amen? Amen. A person who freely offers to take part in an enterprise, a company, or business. Remember Jesus when he was 12? They had left and they come back and, I mean, parents are upset. It's like a you know, three-day three journey and, and they come back and they find him in the temple. And what did he say? I must be about my father's business. See, you and I need to grab a hold of that. We need to be about our Father's business. We, we need to be about the business of Jesus. Yes. And, and his business is to save. But you've got to, we all have to begin to offer ourselves, offer what we have. Now we're going to look at that. In Matthew 10, 8. Jesus tells his disciples, there's 12, and he's, he's sending them out. He says, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely. Freely you have received. What do you think that they had received? I mean, you, you, you look what, what, what Jesus yeah. said, come and follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Fishers of men. Because we're going to see that he, he, he gave them a kingdom, and also that, that they sit, the Bible says that they, were, they sit on thrones and will judge. And you look and see, Lord, I want to be a part of that number. I want to be a part of, 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 of being that disciple, of, of being that, that volunteer. I want to, you know, come and hear your sayings. I want to take what you have freely given to me, and I want to be able to give it away, not withhold it. I mean, no, 
And the Bible says when we, we when we withhold, it hurts us. Right. He, he he says when you know God loves a cheerful giver. He he, he says if, if you sow bountifully, you'll what? But if you sow sparingly, see God multiplies the seed that you've sown. So you've got to determine what am I sowing into people's lives. What am I doing to sow into somebody's life? Am I taking what God has gifted me and, and, and presenting it to people? Am I sowing it back? Give and it'll be given to you. Remember when Jesus said that? Give and it'll be given to you. Press down, shaken together. People will give back into your livelihood. He says to the measure that you give, it will be measured back to you. I'm telling you what, Christians should be the greatest givers on the planet. Anybody in here Christians? <laughs> in, in John 1, 11 and 12, that we're going to look at, freely you have received. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. It's talking about Israel, about his people. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. Hallelujah. <laughs> to those who believe in his name. Now, just that. He, he, he says, to those that receive him. Have you received Jesus? Yeah. If you have, then you are a child of God. You, you have received his kingdom. He, he, he says in, in 1 Corinthians 2.12, <clears throat> Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. What, what spirit is he talking about? <coughs> it's the Holy Spirit. He says, you, you, you've received the spirit of God. Right. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. Now, when something's free, what does that mean? No charge. No charge. You can't earn it. It's just given. How many like that, man? Woo, praise the Lord. Free, 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 free. <laughs> free. It's free. In Romans 8, 32, it says, He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? That's some pretty good stuff. Anybody ever get something in, in the mail and, oh man, where'd this come from? Somebody sent me something. Anybody ever get something through the mail? Man, man this is nice. Somebody sent me, you know, it had, to, it had to cost them something. You know what? They were thinking of me. I mean, know this, Valentine, you better be thinking of somebody. Okay? <laughs> oh. In Hebrews 12, 28, he says, therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom, hallelujah, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. And you might say, well, I've I got nothing, I've got nothing. No, shh. <laughs> you got a lot, but you just don't know what you got. Some of you don't know what you got until it's gone. There's a truth in God's word. He sent his word to heal us. He sent his word to deliver us. He sent his word to give us salvation, to prosper us, to make us whole, to, to make what we lack for nothing. 
But see, we have to receive it by faith. Amen? Amen. See, everything I receive, I'm a receiver. I got to catch that thing. I got to pack it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I got to protect what God has given me. I don't want to fumble. I want to hang on to it. Hang on to the things of God. Oh, I, you know, I, I got nothing from God. God, you know, he, he doesn't hear my prayers. He, he, you know, you know, what are you talking about? The Bible says he hears the prayers of the righteous. See, don't let the enemy put thoughts in your head that God doesn't care. God doesn't know. He, does, he just, he's sleeping. He says to come boldly into my throne room of grace. He's calling on me. Come on in, my sons and daughters. Come on in here. Tell me what you have need of. I don't want to bother you. You know, last time, you know, back in 1984. <laughs> That's been too long. You should be going into the throne room every day. Amen. Every day, you should be going into that throne room. And, Lord, I'm here. What do you want me to do today, Lord? Lord, gift me. Lord, I, I, I desire spiritual gifts. Lord, I desire, Lord, to, to take what you've given me. Lord, I, I love being a giver because you have freely given to me. Lord, all that I have, everything good in my life has come from you. How many would agree? Yes. And it's like for me to just not be able to make the connection freely I've received, freely give. That's pretty simple to me growing up in Nellwood. <laughs> sometimes I need it pretty simple. Lord, you, you've done this for me. Lord, you, you, you died for me so all the blessings of Abraham might come on me. Lord, you, Lord, you became a curse. Everyone who hangs on a tree is cursed. On a cross is cursed. The Lord was cursed that the blessing of Abraham might come on me. How many know that Abraham was a blessed man? How many know that God spoke to Abraham? I mean, it got to the point that you know what? We're going to reveal it to Abraham because Abraham will teach his children and their children. Come on, and their children. How many know that we should be teaching our, our family the truth of how good God is? That he answers prayer. That he's for us. He's not against us. You know, he, he, he says you'll, you'll, have, you'll have tribulation in the world. <coughs> He said, be of good cheer. I've, I've overcome the world. I have life in me. Though a man may die, yet shall he live. See, sal salvation is not based on your righteousness. It's based on his righteousness. Hallelujah. All right, I got to keep moving. <clears throat> See, we are receiving this kingdom. God's kingdom trumps every kingdom here on earth. Everything in the natural, because God's kingdom is supernatural. God can bring from His kingdom the supernatural into the natural. Do you believe that? Yes. It's, it's not possible to walk on water. But how many know that Jesus and Peter walked on water? It's, it's not possible that, 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 that water can stand up like a wall and, 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 and the ground can dry up to where you can walk on it. That's not possible in the natural. It's, it's not possible in, a, in, in the natural for, for somebody to be dead 
Oh, boy. Three, three, four days, and, and then to be raised to life again. That's, that's not possible in the natural. But of the kingdom of God, it's possible. Right. And we're a part of that kingdom. Mm -hmm. we're, we're a part of miracles and signs and wonders. Now, Elisha and Elijah. The prophets of God that, you know, with, I'll, I'll start off with Elijah. God said, I, I'm, I'm sending you, uh, he says, God said to the prophet Elijah, I have commanded a widow in Zarephath to provide for you. A widow. <coughs> a widow to provide for you. For the prophet. Now you would have thought, you know, I'm going to send you to a king to just to a widow and he, he goes to her path and here he, he, he sees the woman the you know, spirit of God and, and she's picking up sticks she's picking up sticks so that she can have a fire she, 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 she's going to make a meal for her and her son, and then they're going to die. And, and God tells the prophet, I'm sending you to this widow that's going to provide for you. She's got nothing, God. She's got nothing. Why would you say, Father God, why would you do that? Send me to somebody who has some provision. But see, there's it's twofold. It, it, it was not only for the prophet, but it was for the widow. This is kind of what she says to him. He, uh, he, he, he says to her, he says, please bring me a cup of water and then please bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. And, and she says, as the Lord your God lives, I do not have bread. She, she said, I don't have anything. Why would you be asking me? Now the story gets better. <laughs> he, she says, all I have is a handful of flour in a bin. Now think about that, a handful of flour. Anybody ever bake? And, a handful of flour is not much, is it? No. Unless she had some big hands, which I don't think she did. <laughs> okay? So she didn't have much. And then she says, she, she had a little oil in a jar. She said, I'm gathering sticks, preparing a fire for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. And this is what Elijah said. Do not fear. Go and do as you have, you have said, but make me a small cake from it first. And bring it to me and afterwards make some for yourself and your son. Now, realize this. If, if all she has is a handful of this, once she makes it for the prophet, there's, there's nothing in the bin. The, the, oh, I mean, there, there's nothing. But he, he says to her, now this is the part that we need to understand God at his word. Because he said, go and do this, for thus saith the Lord God of Israel. How many know we need to hear more of that? Thus saith the Lord. Because he still speaks in that way. The bin of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the jar run dry until rain comes. How many know Elijah had prayed and, and for three and a half years there's, there's no rain. So this could have been like Three years of provision. Supernaturally. How, how can you account for, I mean, the, the, the bin, there, there's nothing in it. I used it up for the prophet. You know, I, I made this cake and I gave it to him. And this bin doesn't run dry. The, the oil, this jar doesn't run dry. I mean, how many here you would like all your bills and everything to be paid, your, 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 your food supply to be paid for three years? <coughs> Anybody? Ooh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 
But see, what we have to realize in this whole story, she had to do something. She had to take what she had in her mind. She, I have nothing. This is what I have, and that's really nothing. But she had to take what she had and give it to the Lord. See, freely you have received, freely give. It's still that way today. If you want to see a miracle in, in your life, then you're going to have to learn to grab a hold of giving. Grab a hold of it. Don't be afraid. To give, to give into the kingdom of God what you have. Now, the other prophet, Elisha, <coughs> sent to a widow. There's, it's, it's like, how many remember Jesus saw the widow? You know, he's looking at people giving in to the treasury. And people, you know, here, here, here comes this widow with two copper coins. Two copper coins that added up really to be nothing. But Jesus said, to his disciples. You, you see that widow there? She gave more than all the, I mean, they're bringing them back and just, whoosh. but Jesus said they gave out of their wealth. Well, I got a hundred thousand. I, I think I'll give the Lord 10 bucks. Well, Pastor, you don't have to put it that way. Well, I'm trying to get you to see that there was people bringing into the treasury and Jesus noticed them but he said about the widow she gave more than them all two copper coins I mean two pennies man I just gave ten thousand dollars I've got a half a million I gave ten thousand dollars yeah but you count up how, how much do you still have out of a half a million four hundred and ninety thousand whoo doggy that's still a lot left. Jesus said this widow gave everything. Her whole livelihood was wrapped up in that. How many? I, I'm telling you what, when God notices you giving, how many know that he'll supply what you have need of? I, I, I'm convinced that that widow was taken care of. <clears throat> It, it doesn't say, but I know how God operates. That as you give, it'll be given back to you. Amen? Amen. So, Elijah, he's, you know, this maidservant comes and, you know, to the prophet. And she says, my husband's dead. Now, now her husband was of the prophets. How many know back then they, 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 they had... Uh, those that were in the order of, of, of in several prophets that kind of were in this, uh, how, how, how can I put it? It was kind of like if, if, if you put a whole bunch of pastors together, you know, there was a, a thing called there's the band of prophets. And her husband was one of them. He died. And, and, and she's saying, you know that I fear the Lord. And here I've got creditors. They're going to take my two sons. I can't pay my credit. I can't, you know, so, so, so they're going to take my sons. And they're going to work it off. They're going to, and, and, and she says, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? And he says, well, what, what do you want me to do for you? And he says, what do you have? What do you have in your house? You now, sometimes we think, I got nothing to offer the Lord. I got nothing. I got nothing. Shh. You got more than what you realize. She, she says, nothing. I got nothing. All I got is, is see, then, then, then she says, I do have something. I have a jar of oil. But how is that going to pay for all? I mean, and, and this is what the prophet says, go and borrow vessels from everywhere. Go and borrow it from your neighbors. Empty vessels. I mean, oh, you don't want, no, you, you know, they're, they're, they're not going to give you a full, but, you know, do you have any empty vessels? 
So they collect the empty vessels and bring them back. And the prophet says, bring them in, all that you got, close the door, and the jar that you have, take that and start pouring it into the vessels. So she's pouring away, and that's getting full. Son, bring me another one. What's there? Son, bring me another one. So she, she's filling up all these vessels out of this jar. How can that happen? Because God's involved in it. Listen, God's involved. When you get God involved in your life, miracles happen. But he's asking us to do our part. You know, sometimes we want everybody else to do it for us. No, there, there's a part that you play. What do you have in your house? What do you have inside of you? What do you got? What are you willing to give away? And it said that when they got to the last vessel and there was no more, she said, son, bring me another. No, they're, they're all used up, mom. It said that the oil stopped. So the widow says, you know, now we've got a bunch of oil here. He, he says, go and sell the oil. And he says, pay off your creditors. And then he says, you live on the rest of it. <clears throat> so I'm thinking there had to be quite a few vessels. I don't know what the price of oil was going for, but it had to be enough to pay off the creditors. And it had to be enough for them to live on. See, provision. God, freely you've received, freely give. We've got to get a hold of that, church. You know, we cry out to God, God, do something. And he's saying, what do you have? What can you do? Because with the same measure that you give, I'll measure it back to you in a good measure. Overflowing measure. Give and it'll be given to you. See, that's that's part of, of freely we've received. Now freely give. I want us to get a hold of that. We, you know, with, with communion, we, we're going to receive communion. And what that represents the, of all that Jesus began to do in the teeth, it represents him. That he became a curse for us. That the blessings of Abraham might come on us. And we're going to read it. He, he, he says, I received from the Lord. I received from the Lord. See, we've got to be receivers, but we also have to be givers. Freely, we've received, freely give. See, you've got to get that in your DNA as Christians. You can't withhold what God has given you. If you want to, now, now if you don't want a miracle and, and you want the devil to steal from you, then don't, don't give. Don't sow. Just, no, this is mine. We're going to eat this and we're going to die. No, I got nothing. I, 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 I hear what you say, prophet of God, but why would you come to me and ask of me? I'm asking of you. Remember a president that said, don't, don't ask what your country can do for you, but what can you do for your, for your country? It's like it's, it's getting your eyes onto the truth of God. That God will supply all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. He will supply my healing. He will supply my soundness. He will supply my prosperity, my provision. God will take care of me if I learn to be a giver. Freely you've received, freely give. Now in 1 Corinthians, we're going to prepare ourselves to receive what he's, he's given to us. So why don't we go ahead, if, if you got your, your cup. <clears throat> now, now yesterday, with, with our men, with our men's breakfast, we were talking about examining ourselves. 
How many know the Bible says for us to examine ourselves before we receive communion? Right. And it's like, let's not eat or drink this in an unworthy manner. You need to be honest with yourself. If there's things in your life that you know that needs to go, that it's not from God, get rid of it. Amen? Amen. Let's, let's, he, he says this in, in 1 Corinthians 11. He says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you. That the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. Now, why did Judas betray Jesus? Money. Money. He loved money. He, 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 he got his eyes on the money. And he took his eyes off of Jesus. I mean, Judas was a part of the one he should go and heal the sick and raise the dead and you know, freely you've received, free, freely give. He, he, he was a part of that. But he, he got off track <coughs> because of money. And how many know the love of money is the root of all evil? Money should just be a tool. Use it for the glory of God. Hallelujah. But we see here him, him saying, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, he said, now, now, now before we do this, I want us to have just some time to judge ourselves. I want you to judge yourself, examine yourself before we partake. Thank you, Lord, for your great work. Thank you, Lord, that a body, your body was prepared to save me, to rescue me, to make me whole. And Lord, that as we partake of you today, as we partake of the bread and we partake of the cup, Lord, that you would cleanse us and make us whole from all unrighteousness. Forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. He said he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So let's partake of the bread. He said in the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant, or new agreement. In my blood, this do, as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So let's partake of the cup. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, I'm convinced that what he has started in you, he's going to finish the work. He's going to finish the work. You allow him to work in you. Start looking around within yourself. In your house, of something that you can give that would help somebody. That would bless somebody. 
See, because you and I were created to be blessings. You, you were never created to be an island to yourself. He said, go into all the world. See, with the widows, he said, you go and do this. There's, there's that portion of going and taking what you have and giving it away. Freely we've received, freely give. As you have opportunity today, bless somebody real good. I mean, bless their socks off. Don't take their socks. <laughs> Maybe give them a pair of socks. And you know what I'm saying? There's in, it's in the doing. It's in the doing. It's in the doing. The doing, not here, is taking what the Lord has taught us. And I'm telling you what, love never fails. Amen. Amen. Always be motivated out of love. Be motivated by love. The devil can't fight love. Or the devil can't win over love. He'll, he'll try to fight again, but it says love never fails. The agape love. So let's stand to our feet. Father God, I thank you for each and every person in this building today, and even, Lord, those that are not here today. Father, I just pray that your word will not return void, but it will accomplish that for which it was sent. Father, to work in their lives, to change their lives for the better. And, Father, everybody around them, that they would know that there is a God in Israel, that they would know that there is a God in America, that they would know there is a God in central Illinois. Lord, in each and every home, Father, to you be the glory, to you be the honor. Might and dominion be yours now and forever. In Jesus' name, all of the saints said, Amen. 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 Break one another in a spirit of love.